Good morning, Jerry. How are you? Hey, good morning, guys. Were you nervous at halftime against Miami? Well, I'm not going to say I was nervous, but um, uh, I had thought that was pretty impressive, that first drive that we made down. We just got a field goal, but I sure thought that uh, uh, we were, let's say, that we were the best team. And uh, I, I don't think I ever quit thinking that all day long. Now, it was really neat to see uh, – uh, start clicking and see, uh, especially in that third quarter, see us have the execution we had. Jerry, is it more nerve-wracking to go into a game as a huge favorite or go into a game as a huge underdog? Well, I don't think nerve-wracking. Uh, I would say nerve-wracking. I would say that uh, it's uh, kind of humorous to realize how uh, difficult when you're up 20 or 30 20, 25 points when you're, uh, the spread is saying you'll um, have that kind of success because you all know that ball is oblong, so to speak, bounces a lot of different ways, just like the onside kick they didn't get, just like the uh, roughing the kicker they got. Those things come to play, and before you know it, you're right there in the middle of it. Then you let one happen that shouldn't happen. So that's the NFL, but that's what makes it great. Jerry, when you watch a game like that and you see Dak, you know, going deep an awful lot, even though they he wasn't hitting on everyone, do you watch the game like a fan in that sense where you're getting up on the edge of your seat or do you like the, hey, let's just grind it out and get this win and go on? No, I'm liking uh, the uh, uh, different, uh, really, uh, the message that we're sending. Uh, you know, these guys uh, obviously look at these tapes and, and make their living studying your tapes of weeks and weeks before, weeks back in the case of if if we were playing a team in December. They'll look at this stuff and they'll see that uh, uh, we really are intent upon taking that ball deep. We've got some receivers that can get open. Uh, that keeps them off of you. The other day they were playing way back, the defense, leaving us uh, – uh, the, the middle area of the field open real good. But the point is, uh, all of this impacts, all this sends messages as we move forward in the NFL. As you know, we play all of our division opponents again that we've played, and we've got Philadelphia twice. So, you know, they're, they were not going to line up. Uh, uh, they're going to stop some of this stuff we're doing. We've got to be ready to do something else, and we've got to let them know we can do something else. Jerry Jones here on The Fan. Obviously, you saw enough in Kellen Moore. Uh, to make him the offensive coordinator. But since the season started, Jerry, what has stood out to you? Or what have you noticed about Kellen and, and working with him week to week to develop these game plans and really unleash this offense? Well, he's not afraid to pull the trigger. And uh, I had a great friend of mine pass recently, Boone Pickens. And Boone sent a letter out uh, to be uh, sent after his death. said, if you're reading this, I'm gone. But when I, in the letter it said, I'm often asked why I've enjoyed some of the success. And he says, uh, because I never got the ready aim, ready aim, ready aim, ready aim syndrome. <laughs> I always had the ready aim fire, ready <laughs> aim fire. And uh, that's the key. And uh, Kellen will obviously make the call and he'll make the, he'll call the play and, and uh, uh, go for it. Jerry, Robert Quinn uh, came out with his debut, and it looked like he was shot out of a cannon. Uh, and I know that you are going to try to emulate his celebration sack dance uh, at future times. What did you think of Quinn's debut? Well, that's one of the best I've seen riding that pony. Now, you know what's fun? Sometimes Zeke will do something like that. He'll put a towel on or he'll put a, some shorts on or something and head down through the middle of the dressing room kind of spanking himself as he emulates uh, the the riding the horse but uh, <laughs> uh, and that's before a game so you can see how uh, what a uh, asset he is uh, on and off the field to the Dallas Cowboys I'm talking Zeke Prescott but uh, I mean Zeke uh, Elliott but but uh, bottom line is uh, uh, the uh, Robert Quinn brings that to the table as well. He's uh, he's a veteran. On the other hand, he plays with the exuberance of a rookie, and his game is uh, just um, uh, sheer uh, energy. 
And um, if he's got an issue at all, it's uh, uh, kind of thwarting his tendency to run by the quarterback a little bit. But, boy, he's back there, and he's messing with them. And uh, he's he's just an outstanding contributor. Uh, I don't know when we've been in better shape, if you look at Lawrence on one end, Quinn on the other, and uh, everything in between. Uh, we've got a good defensive front. A lot of credit should go to – uh, Rod and uh, guys that uh, that really have developed these guys. That Hyder is really special for us inside and out. He plays, got a lot of position flex. He played every every position. Hyder did last week. Jerry, uh, you give the big contracts in the off season. Jalen Smith, Tank Lawrence. They they've caught a little fire over the last couple of weeks. Maybe not living up to the deal as of yet. But has the has the defense as a whole? Have, do you think it's underachieved a little bit? Even though the points per game are are low, giving up a lot of yards. Well, uh, why don't we maybe point to that our offense has been so outstanding uh, that it's uh, kind of caught our attention. But the facts are when you don't, uh, in the NFL, you keep somebody from scoring a touchdown, that's pretty stellar work. And so uh, uh, what I do see that is important is a defensive group that uh, is, um, uh, to overuse the word, evolving, coming together, uh, We've got some young guys on this defensive front. We're playing a lot of young guys. Uh, we're getting a lot of people played in that secondary. We're actually playing more linebackers than anybody would have guessed, and we've got a heck of a rotation. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, fresh guys coming in and out on that defensive front. I think it's healthy, healthy, healthy. Jerry, it looked like Darian Thompson filled in pretty nicely uh, for Xavier Woods on Sunday. Uh, how optimistic are you that you can get Xavier back for the Saints? Well, I, I don't know. But uh, uh, I do know that uh, we're looking maybe to see him practice this week, which tells you all you need to know. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, uh, you do miss a player like him out there, and he's really uh, just becoming – uh, the beginning of what Xavier Woods can be. So uh, we missed him. We miss him when he's not out there, and uh, uh, we'll see how he practices this week. Jerry Jones joining us every single week on Sean and RJ on the Home of the Cowboys, brought to you by Ford. Ford is the best in Texas. Jerry, when is the when's the earliest that you think you can get a special feel about a team? Can you tell in training camp, does it take a quarter of the season not to your face a great opponent. Can you remember back through your years and say, oh, I remember when I knew that we ha really had something here? Well, I think, uh, of course, you the key word that your your question has is team, T-E-A-M. But, boy, you start seeing parts, uh, especially areas that involve depth. And uh, you start seeing a Pollard uh, have some things that he's bringing to the table. You see that in uh, training camp. Uh, you see him step up there. You see his uh, uh, naturalness, uh, letting the play, the blocker uh, do the work for him. And then all of a sudden you see outstanding explosion, power, ability to cut, cut quick feet. Uh, then you know that's going to help you. And you can see that. We saw that pretty early, if you recall. And uh, uh, that's uh, pretty typical of the way he, when, when he ran the ball in uh, Memphis. Well, a lot of people, he had a big back ahead of him, a 230-something pound, 240-pound line uh, big back. Well, uh, uh, he's big. Pollard's big. Pollard weighs 210, 212 pounds. But, man, does he have smoothness and quickness. But you see that, well, then you know you're going to have some another weapon that you can inject into your – uh, your plan as you go into the season. Um, uh, you see that all over. You see uh, special guys as it might be pertain to depth, depth. And then you see every now and then you see a player speak and say, "My, he he may be he may be out there a lot by the time we get to mid season, especially on younger players. You have to handicap those, and know when they're going to get better as they go through." Almost two and a half college seasons is what a pro season is. They're going to get better, and then you have to also handicap your veteran players. Jerry, we don't like to give our buddy Mark Colombo any credit, but when you look around the rest of the league 
and look at y'all's offensive line. I mean, it just seems to be night and day. You have gaping holes to run through. Dak has time. I mean, how high a level is your offensive line playing right now? Well, first of all, uh, Mark is one of the most intelligent people, Mark Lumbo, that I've been around. And, uh, of course, he is his uh, – Social life reflects that. He's uh, big into music. He's uh, <laughs> uh, got a demeanor that was built to be a, a coach, uh, much less an offensive line coach. And uh, uh, he's got that, but he's sharp as a tack. And uh, he he really will take uh, any person that he's around and create football mentality. Yeah, uh, that's not just toughness. That's just an attacking toughness. Toughness can be defended as as just being able to take it. Well, that's not enough for Mark. He wants to give it. And uh, for instance, uh, Collins, Lyle Collins, has been such a focal point for for uh, Mark to use as an illustrator. He calls him the enforcer. But his attitude in there, his giving it out attitude, is something that our offensive line is really benefiting from uh, and of course uh, uh, Zach played the best game arguably the best game that I've seen him uh, play and he's played some good ones but he was uh, just almost perfect the other day and uh, so uh, I'm talking Zach Martin so uh, yes we've got guys out there that uh, are very special and we've got depth and we've got young depth on the way and so all of that is good. That front's a big part of this team. Jerry, did uh, Columbo ever ask you to make a cameo or guest appearance in one of his uh, music videos? Free rain video. Well, I don't know that I've sent him my tape. I, I probably <laughs> uh, 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 can do some of that, uh, uh, some things that uh, – He's just heard about. I, that's a good idea. I think I'll send him over some tape. I'll get it back. I had a high school reunion uh, out at the stadium this weekend, and it was great to see everybody and see a lot of old friends. But uh, I was reminded that one of the girls gave me a picture, and it was when I was in about the ninth grade, and she could put her hand on the top of my head. I was that short. <laughs> and uh, she was short, this particular girl that was talking to me. And, I used to dance, had those blue jeans rolled up past your ankles and <laughs> had that uh, had that look that they had back then. But uh, uh, I was a goober, but I didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Jones joining us goober. here on 105.3 The Fed. Uh, Saints this week, there's no Drew Brees. It's Teddy Bridgewater. In a way, do you kind of – is it a letdown that it's not the great Drew Brees where you don't get the full measurement? of your team against a, a Super Bowl contender like the Saints? Oh, no. Uh, I, boy, they have so much uh, team-wise that to, to compete with, as they illustrated against Seattle, out in Seattle of all places. Uh, but uh, uh, listen, from top to bottom down there, Mickey Lomas uh, and, of course, Sean, and uh, uh, they're they're built for action and built to play and built to win football games, and they're thinking way ahead. They look around corners to use some cliches here, but that Teddy Bridgewater, everybody knows that he's a talented, talented uh, football player, and uh, he's very capable of uh, with people like Sean Payton giving him tutoring him. He's very capable of being all you want at quarterback. And so, uh, no, I don't, I don't see anything but uh, a real, real, uh, we're going to have to really have a lot going for us to get out of there with a win. Jerry, any major developments with uh, Dak or Amari or anyone else contract-wise that you'd like to break on the show? Oh, well, not today. Uh, uh, you know, I just think uh, the, the, the best thing that I can say is how well they're both those players are working together. And um, if their status right now has anything to do with that, then let's keep it going. And I'm talking their overall status. But, uh, boy, that Amari put on a clinic out there on route running, as you all know. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. You're talking about going deep. You're talking about showing speed. You're talking about willingness to take it deep as a quarterback. I don't know that you can scare them any more for the future than to give a clinic on Amari Cooper's uh, route running. Those routes were 
unbelievable mm. to have his size and quickness in and out those routes. So uh, uh, that's got to get him a lot of attention, and uh, he can win with that attention. But, uh, boy, it sure makes it a great day for a, potentially for a Cobb who, who you, we all saw what he brings to the table. He's just an instinctive playmaker. On the interception, he came back and arguably made the best play of the game when he knocked the ball out of the interceptor's hands. And it was just a such a, a an aware play. And that's what you got when you get Cobb on the field. Jerry, is there uh, is there any chance that Jason would get a contract extension before the end of the regular season? Well, again, I don't would not even uh, – I'm not ignoring your question, but I certainly wouldn't want to respond in any way because uh, uh, that's just not uh, – what we'd want to do relative to that area of our business. Uh, Jerry is way far down the road, but fans are already petrified about Kellen Moore getting, getting uh, taken out of here and and stolen from somebody else. So uh, we just want to put that in your ear of, of uh, do whatever you can to keep Kellen around before someone comes uh, and looking to steal him away from you guys. It's great to have about, I'd, I'd put at least three, um, uh, coaches, uh, three uh, players that are having, I mean, three coaches that are having that kind of respect. It reminds me of the days when we were having Dave Weinstead and Norv Turner, and you look around, and I was, uh, they had rules that you couldn't talk to a coach during the season. Hmm. And I was having owners of teams calling me and arranging for secret notes or secret messages so that you could let them know and communicate with those coaches. And I think it's great. I think it really is a real boon to any organization to have coaches uh, that uh, other clubs want. Jerry, thank you for the time. Life is good. Let's keep it going, and we'll talk to you next week. See you next week, guys.